Hello everyone, a new update of the LTX Video AI model with 13 billion size parameters. Here we have some demos on the Hugging Face page showing generated videos by LTX Video. They've listed all the model versions on the Hugging Face page, where you can start clicking through the files and versions. Then, you scroll down to the list of the model's files. As you can see right here, we have the latest versions, LTX 13B, and this is in version 0.97. We have the DEV versions, this is the full pre-trained model files. And then we have the FP8 versions right here. I found out that even when using FP8, there's a requirement to download additional things. When you come to the ComfyUI LTX GitHub repositories, you'll find the latest update of 13B version 0.97 release notice. You have the download link here where you can download the model files. And then here we have the quantize for the FP versions, which are optimized to run on consumer grade GPUs like the NVIDIA 4090 and 5090. Because even in the FP8 versions, the file size is going to be around 15 gigabytes. With that, therefore, as the official GitHub repository says, it's ideally suited for consumer-grade GPUs, specifically the 4090 and 5090. So, even the QA kernel and this one will require you to download and install when running the FP8 quantized version of this model. You'll have to do some installations, but it's very easy. Just three command prompts and you're ready to go. Instead of that, there's another, more straightforward way to run the latest LTX AI model versions which is going to be the GGUF files that are quantized for LTX. These are quantized in different sizes of the AI models, so you have to check out what size fits your GPU. Some might not fit the quantized Q8, and you might have to downsize to Q6, Q4, or Q3. There's a chart right here, and you can check the hardware compatibility with which quantized bit of the file model. For me, I can run the Q8, because this is below the 24 gigabyte VRAM limit, so I'm able to run something that's just under 24 gigabytes of VRAM. I downloaded the Q8, and I think this time, running the GGUF quantization model is more straightforward for testing out the LTX models, since, for me, the LTX models aren't my main usage, so I would just go with something that already exists, which is the ComfyUI GGFF custom nodes that allow us to run this more directly. I have the custom nodes installed in Comfy UI, and then I just download the files. Also, this Hugging Face repo has examples of workflows, so you guys can check out the example workflows and use them. Currently, the LTX 13B models are available only for text-to-video and image-to-video example workflows, and this is good enough to test the quality if it's something you want to use or just treat as an AI toy to play around with on your computer. I loaded the example workflow and made some changes because I don't need those other optional custom nodes that are included in the example workflow. The other tab here is the image to video option, which is really easy. You just have to change the input options here for the LTX sampler. Without the image, it becomes like this example, bypassing the image node. That means it's not going to connect with the sampler and you're just running with text to video in this style of cut connection. Something else I changed was to simplify things further by using the example workflow. I just use one GGUF loader, which is good enough for what I need to test about the LTX 13B models. Also, I can enable the Sage Attentions with Torch Compile, and this one is specifically for the LTX models. We're not using Torch Compile with other AI video models, such as Wan videos or Hinyuan videos. There are a few different types. When you double click the search bar, you can check out Torch Compile, where you have other types of Torch Compile notes available to run within the KJ Note Custom Notes Pack. Also, by default, the Comfy UI Native Note has a Torch Compile model. Well, you can use this one as well. It has fewer options to configure, that's the only difference, but the back end still allows you to choose the same thing inductor or CUDA graphs, which are the two same options in both Torch Compile nodes available. So, back to here we see the sampling groups, this is more different compared to what we saw in the previous LTX video versions of models used in Comfy UI. Now we have the LTX video custom nodes built by the LTX team, they've built specific custom nodes here for running the LTX models, 
which improve a lot for the quality and coherence of the animations and graphics generated from LTX, they've officially implemented STG. If you've checked out the previous videos, STG is something like CFG, but it's got a lot more improvement, more steady presentations for the graphics. The 13B model that I downloaded is the QA version, and I tested it a few times before this video. It runs pretty smoothly, completing within one minute, and I'm able to generate a full-size 720p resolution with the default frame number of 129 frames. This is the default setting for their AI model. Then, we have a further step in the example workflow, which is the latent upscaler. The latent upscaler we have are specially built by LTX Video. They've also created an upscale model specifically for the LTX model. So, this time, I see that the LTX video team has upgraded and built the whole tools or set of custom nodes around the latest update of LTX video. They even have this upscale model that works with their unsampler model loader. You have two types of upscale models by LTX. Now come back to the official Hugging Face page, go to the files versions, and then you will see at the bottom of the page, there's a temporal upscaler and a spatial upscaler. So. Both are the upscaling models used for version 0.97 of LTX video. When you come back to Comfy UI, this LTX latent upsampler model loader is going to let you choose whether you want to use the temporal upscaler or the spatial upscaler. I've downloaded both and will try them as well. So once you choose, for example, the temporal upscaler, of course, in these options below, we'll tick check this one to true and the spatial upsampling will check to false. This way will make this work for the temporal upscalers for your video generations and the other way when choosing the spatial upscaler will do the opposite choice. Down here, we have the latent upscaler and then we pass the latent noise to here. The next group is for the tile sampler. Here we're going to upscale your videos using the LTX built-in custom nodes or their set of new custom nodes that they specifically built for the LTX AI model. Right here, we'll see that the tile sampler uses the same model input data as well as everything else here. Basically, this time I see a lot of STG that they apply with their LTX video 0.97, the full name called Spatiotemporal Skip Guidance. Instead of using the normal CFG sampling method that other AI models are using, yes, this is the other way of doing the sampler using STG. They're basically leveraging this technique to run their model, enhance the video quality. Let's try something out here. One other thing worth mentioning about LTX is the LTX Prompt Enhancer. This isn't a new thing, but they've updated it as well. Using the Llama 3.2.3b instruct models for the language models. Based on that, we have the vision to go through your image and then turn that into a more suitable text prompt for LTX models to run. Because if you've tried out the previous versions of LTX video, you'll notice that they have some requirements for the text prompt. Even if you have an image for image to video as the first frame guider, you need a very detailed text prompt, like a long essay, to make it work better. So they built this prompt enhancer. Whenever you have some ideas and want to animate this image, for example, I have this futuristic tunnel hallway background and a woman like a fashion model walking and doing some motions. You can always make a simple text prompt here, like turn the camera view around and look back while walking forward into the futuristic hallway, like this example that I have. It will help you enhance your prompt directly here sending an output string passed to the text code for the positive prompt. Let's try this one and see how that looks. Okay, so let's check out the generated result based on this image. We have the woman turning around and then turning back and going forward into the hallway right here. This is the base video that's generated from the first sampler. When we have the width and height originally set for the LTX video, it's no problem at all generating in 24 gigabytes of VRAM or 16 gigabytes of VRAM using the first sampler. But I find out that when we're using the LTX upscaler, this part requires a little more VRAM to process. When I have this running, actually the upscaling part here and then adding detail using the second tiled sampler, it will take more processing time to run this part rather than the first part. So, you know, it's almost like the secondary thing 
costs more than the main subject or the main part of the whole workflow right now. But this is normal because when you see the default settings for the VAE tile, it's going up to 1280 resolutions for the width and also for the height. Of course, if you're doing landscape view, then that will only be applied to the width here. And as you can see, the video, the whole coloration sharpening after upscale, put side by side with the two generate results. And you'll see that there's a big difference. While the first sampler, you'll see that the face is blurring, even in different angles of the character turning side and facing forward, you can't see the eyes clearly. But after upscaling, you'll see that the eyes are clearly showing in the upscaler, adding details for the video as well as the clothing. You see the texture of the leather and the reflection here. Whereas if you just get the first sampler, you only see some kind of plastic-like view of the clothing. Those little details of the texture are showing to the viewer. This is the difference between sampling after using the upscale and the first sampler without the upscale. So far, I see the models, even using GGUF quantizations, don't affect too much about the animations. You know, some of the other AI videos we've tested, when we use GGUF quantizations with smaller sizes trimmed down, it reduces some motions of how the AI will generate your video, but this one looks about the same with the FP8 of the LTX model. Of course, if you're using the full pre-trained model weights, that's going to be totally different. They have more data in the model weights in the full size of this model, 28 gigabytes compared with the 16 gigabyte file size. Of course, there's a lot of difference there, but when you talk about being able to run on a consumer PC locally and fast running FP8 or GGUF quantized models, then, you know, this is going to be the way and this is what you get on a local PC using LTX video. Second of all, let's check out the generate speed this time. As you can see, the first sampling is using 1 minute and 22 seconds without any optimization of the sampling settings or anything, just using the default example workflow, even though I tuned up the dimensions to 720p resolution, then went down here. This is where the tridents get started for the second sampler, and this is the upscaling part, where you see the upscaling takes 2 minutes and 27 seconds, so it's almost double the time when dealing with the upscalers and adding detail. Something interesting about LTX is that we've got the frame grind here, where you enhance the colorations, basically the intensity and saturations. You can tune that color after the video generates and exports each image frame. You can resize, as well as adjust, using these custom nodes. Then, it's pretty fun to play with. I added something myself. I'll push the VRAM out after generating and clean some cache, and clean some model loaded data as well. In the middle part here, I'll clean up some model data for the first sampler. So after running, if you don't want some caching data, you can clean that up as well. Then we can save some VRAM for the second part, which is the largest part in this workflow. You need to upscale your video to make it more beautiful than the first sampler. So you need some VRAM to do that as well as for the prompt enhancer. I'll clean that up after using the language models because we don't need to repeatedly use those language models to generate text prompts for us. So run it one time only, and then we can clean it up as well. And that's so far how we run this workflow. And it's already pre-made for you here in the Hugging Face repo. Again, you can download it here for text to video and image to video. And basically both workflows are the same, but the only difference is that if you disconnect the condition for the image, it will turn into text to video. If you connect the image to this option, it will become image to video by default. Let's check out how to install this model, or we can say, well, not install. It's like downloading those files and working this way with the workflow. Now, the first thing you need is the model files. If you don't want to use GGUF, you can download either the FP8 model or the full LTX 13B models here. This is in the official LTX video hugging face repository. I'll also provide a link in the description below. Then if you're using the GGUF quantization model, this is going to be here. You're going to choose either one of those and my graphics card can handle up to 24 gigabytes using the 4090. So I'm going to use this one just to test how that works for the LTX video. Once you download one of the GGUF quantization models of the LTX 13B, you also need the VAE here. It's also pre-made, 
the pre-compiled VAE for you in this one. Specifically for the LTX 13B 0.97 model, you need two files basically to download and then locate the model in your Comfy UI Models folder. Come to the Comfy UI Models folder. You're going to save that in UNET or in Diffusion's model for the model files. For GGOF as well, I usually put GGOF in the UNET folder here, side by side with my Flux model and also my HiDream GGOF model. Then, for the VAE, you're going to go to the VAE folder and save that in your VAE. I have that placed here, the LTX 13B VAE, side by side with WAN 2.1 and the NVIDIA SANA. I still use the NVIDIA SANA sometimes, it's pretty cool. So moving on to the custom nodes, the custom nodes are the LTX video custom nodes that I'm only using specifically for running this AI video. To do that, we're going to the Lightrix Comfy UI LTX Video GitHub Repositories. You're going to download this custom node, which is good enough to run this workflow. Also, the next thing is going to be the Comfy UI GGUF. This custom node allows you to load the GGUF quantization model in Comfy UI. As you can see at the beginning here of the workflow I modified using the UNet loader GGUF, which means it's going to get only the GGUF extension files and load them here. So, you need this tool, and it's going to be able to download in your Comfy UI manager. Sometimes I like to do it in the Windows command prompt. Either way works as well. So, search for the name Comfy UI LTX video. You'll see that there are a few Comfy UI LTX options, but you only need to focus on this one, the Comfy UI LTX video that is without any other text in the title. Those other two are not the ones we need. So, download this. The latest version of this should be the last update on May 8, 2025. This is the latest version you need. Then, the next one is the Comfy UI GGUF again. You can type it in the search bar here, and then you'll have this Comfy UI GGUF developed by City96. The latest update of this file is May 7th, 2025. So, get this tool, and you can run this without problems. And, this is fun to play with. LTX is always giving you a fun time where you can make some silly things. In the previous versions of LTX, there were always some broken parts of the bodies or morphing that you could laugh about and have fun with your friends. But the 13B models are different, more coherent, and the quality looks better. Even the prompt adherence is better since it's using T5XXL this time to make it even better prompting for the AI video model to understand what you want to do. And of course, the prompt enhancer is the best, laziest way that we can use. Just provide a prompt, a very simple text of what you want the image to animate, and it will help you do that. It's really simple. It's a simple solution, I would say, for the LTX company to provide a whole ecosystem where you start from the beginning, create a video, and then you have the upscalers to enhance and add details to the upscaled video. So check it out. This is LTX video 13B version 0.97. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.